Sony completely dominates the top 10 camera sales from Yodobashi in the last two weeks. In fact, in the last four weeks, we've only seen one Canon camera in the top 10. And once again, the same this week. Is it the Canon EOS R6 Mark II? Details coming up, but first I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so that way you can stay up to date on the latest camera gear, news, and rumors. Thanks to Kappa Camera Web, we have Yodobashi's top 10 camera sales for the first two weeks of December. Yodobashi, for those of you not familiar, is a rather large Japanese retailer for all things electronics and appliances, and of course, cameras and lenses. And if you ever do visit Japan, I highly recommend visiting one of their stores. It's just absolutely enormous. We normally start off in 10th place because the surprise is usually in first place. Well, this week, everything's flipped on its head. The surprises are in the bottom half because, well, Sony completely dominates the top 10. And in first place, of course, we have a Sony. And of course, it's the a7 IV, a camera that was announced back last year, late last year, and started shipping right in December and has been dominating the top 10 sales well ever since showing up in first, second, or third, and normally showing up in two separate SKUs. In second place, we have the Sony a7R5, a camera that was announced in late October, and despite being on sale for a very short period of time, has been selling very well. This camera has a dedicated AI chip, a new autofocus that's based on artificial intelligence. And their pixel shift mode? Wow, it's pretty impressive. It doesn't matter if you've got any movement in the frame, whether it's vehicles, people, birds, grass, or even leaves on trees it's able to take that into consideration. And this is the first usable pixel shift that I've seen in any other camera or any camera, despite it being out for many years. And of course it does 8K video up to 24, 25 frames per second. But in third place, we have another Sony and it's the same camera that's in first place. And that's the Sony a7 IV, but it's the kit version this time. So if you add those first and second place or first and third places together, you're really dealing with one camera, but it's just, the, the, the popularity of the a7 IV just can't be dismissed. So first, second, and third dominated by Sony. So gold, silver, and bronze. But in fourth place, again, we have another Sony. Only this time, it's a vlogging camera and it's the ZV-E10. I really like this camera. I really like the first one that came out, the ZV-E1, and the ZV-E10 is selling very well despite Sony having released the ZV-1F. And I really don't like this camera at all. And yes, it's around $500, it's cheaper than the ZV-E10, but it's got a contrast detect autofocus system. And really, why would you spend $500 when you could produce better video and stills with your phone? It doesn't have a headphone jack and the rolling shutter is, well, it's rather nauseating. So I'm not surprised to see the ZV-E10 here. I don't think the ZV-1F is gonna perform very well. I don't think we're gonna see it in the top 10. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Sony stops making it because the ZV-E10 is a far better camera. In fifth place, again, we have a Sony. It's an FX camera. Can you guess which one it is? No, it's not the FX30. It's the FX3, a video-centric version of the A7S III that was announced many years ago. It's been on sale for several years. It's been doing very, very well. So the FX3 is in more demand over the FX30 despite being half the price at $17.98 versus $38.98 for the FX3. But finally, we're gonna move into sixth place and we no longer have a Sony here, although Sony isn't done in the top 10. And this is our first and only Canon camera in the top 10 in sixth place. Can you guess which one it is? Not surprising, despite being announced at the very early part, the early, I think it was November the 2nd, Canon announced the Canon EOS R6 Mark II and it is in sixth place. It might show up a little bit better in the coming weeks as it's we get more sales figures coming in but the Canon EOS R6 Mark II is being received rather well in sixth place, but no way near like first or second, like the Sony cameras. Like the A7R5 was also announced around the same time as the Canon EOS R6. I think they were separated by a couple of days or maybe it was a week, but you can see that the Sony A7R5 is completely dominating, whereas the Canon EOS R6 Mark II is much further down the list in sixth place. So what do you think about this? Why are we seeing such poor Canon numbers in the top 10. And I'm gonna answer that question after we get through to the 10th place. So we got several more cameras to show up. And in seventh place, we have the Nikon Z50 double lens zoom kit, the only Nikon in the top 10. And I'm not surprised that this outsells the Nikon Z30. I'm not as big fan of the Nikon Z30. I like the Nikon Z6 a whole lot better, the Z6 Mark II. And of course, if you're watching, waiting and in hope and anticipation of what other Nikon cameras we might see on the top 10, don't go away. 
What we're really waiting to see is what Nikon is going to announce in the coming weeks. Uh, there's a few people out there. I think Tom, uh, a few others are saying, hey, look, we're going to get a big announcement in CES or CES is going to be a failure. CES is going to be an absolute abysmal failure if we don't get the Nikon Z8. Well, um, then don't watch CES because this is a consumer electronics show. And while we're going to see Nikon, Canon and others there, they're not going to be announcing new cameras. We might get something from Panasonic. This could be a chance for Panasonic, which is a consumer electronics company, to come in here and announce a new camera. But even then, I'm thinking in the coming weeks, as we get close to CP+, Plus, which is on February the 2nd, the week before is where, is where I expect to see a whole bunch of announcements. So uh, I don't expect any Nikon announcements in the next week, or certainly not next week. In eighth place, we have a Sony. Can you guess which one this is? We're, we're starting to run out of Sony cameras to guess, so it shouldn't be too hard. And it's the A7C, but is it the kit or body? That's the kit form. So we have a Sony in eighth place. And in ninth place, we have another Nikon, and it's the Nikon Z9. So it shows, once again, if Nikon's able to get the Nikon Z9 out there, it still continues to perform and sell very, very well. But in 10th place, we have another Sony. This is seven Sonys in the top 10. They're completely dominating with seven cameras in the top 10. Again, this is Yodobashi, Kappa camera, Map camera, Fujio camera. Others may show different results, but I've always been using Yodobashi because they're one of the bigger ones. In 10th place, we have the Sony A6400. And this is the version with the double lens zoom kit. The A6400 is an APS-C camera. We don't see the Canon EOS R7 or R10 in the top 10. This is the lone APS-C camera in the top 10. So the one big question I asked earlier on is, what's happened to Canon sales? Why have they collapsed in the last four weeks? We've only seen one of the Canon cameras in the top 10. And there could be many reasons for this. And I know what you're thinking. What about the third party lens debacle? Well, you tell me because I've, I've seen enough people, I've heard enough, I've read enough comments telling me that I'm done with Canon until they you know, bring in third party lenses. I'm either not gonna buy any more Canon cameras, I'm switching to Sony or something else. Uh, enough people are upset, but would that take the sales from three or four Canon cameras in the top 10 to just a single camera? No, I think something else is going on here. Now, it could be supplies of parts and that kind of thing going on. Canon could be getting rid of inventory, but I think what we're expecting to see, there's a lot of rumors that Canon is supposed to be announcing anywhere from one to three cameras on the heels of CP+. And what we're expecting is an R50, the R100, or the R1000. And all three of these cameras are supposed to be below the price of the Canon EOS R10, which is $979 regularly. But for the past several weeks, this camera has been on sale and despite the sales, isn't showing up in the top 10. It's been on sale for $200 off for $779. So as far as entry level cameras goes, there's no surprising that we're seeing people holding off on purchasing cameras like the R7 and the R10, and that would explain why they're not showing up in the top 10. What about the R5, the R3, the 1DX Mark III? Well, the 1DX Mark III has been out since 2020. It's a little bit old in the tooth, and the R3 is really seen as kind of the substitute teacher of the cameras at this point, but even it's not showing up in the top 10. And even the R5, which has dominated the top five for, well, a long time, uh, isn't showing up either. And one of the reasons for that is Canon Rumors came out with a rumor not too long ago rated as a CR2 saying that from a known source, we're getting a refresh of the Canon EOS R5 coming up in the second quarter of 2023. And if you were looking at getting the R5 and all of a sudden you heard, wait a minute, R5 Mark II and it's going to have a whole bunch of new specifications. It's going to have dual digit X image processors and a whole bunch of other things, including higher resolution. Well, then you might think, well, let's hold off if it's just a couple of months away. I'm going to hold off purchasing that. So that would explain why the R5 isn't showing up in the sales. But what about the R3? Well, the R1 was rumored to be announced, teased in the spring of 2023, which is now just about three months away. But Canon Rumors has come out and said that the R1 is now looking at 2024. So if we do get the R5 in 2023, around, let's say, somewhere between March and May, well, that certainly makes sense that they're going to postpone the R1 and drum up a whole bunch of marketing interest and sales. And well, you know what Canon likes to do. They like to beat their drums, leak information. Let's talk about the R5 for the next couple of months and then release the camera and have everybody want to buy it. And then maybe wait another year and refresh the one series camera and the R3 and give us the R1. That's certainly plausible, but we're seeing a huge fall off in camera sales for, for Canon. They've completely collapsed. And I think it's a collection of all these different things. We're seeing 
Maybe they're having trouble getting parts. Maybe they're slowing down for the Christmas season. Maybe they're getting ready to ramp up new cameras and all their efforts are going into producing cameras that we're not aware of yet that are gonna be announced very shortly coming up with CP Plus and that's plausible as well. And then of course there's you and I thinking about, well, I've got the R5 and maybe I'll get the R5 Mark II as well. And if you were thinking of getting the R5, you were thinking of getting the A7 R5 and you know the R5 Mark II is coming out and it's supposed to have some pretty impressive specifications. Well, I know what I'd be doing and I know what I am doing. I'm waiting to see what this camera might be before I make any other purchase decisions. But let me know what you think in the comments section down below. What do you think has been the reason for Canon's collapsing sales? I've never seen, since I've been covering the Yodobashi Top 10, I've never seen Canon get to a point where they've only had one camera in the Top 10 and it stay like that for, well, four weeks. And that's what we're seeing here. Sony is completely dominating with six cameras in the Top 10 for the last two weeks of November. And now here in the first two weeks of December, we're seeing seven Sony cameras in the top 10. It's just absolutely impressive. And if you want to stay up to date on the latest camera gear news and rumors, I'm really having trouble trying to get my words out here today. Please go ahead and click the subscribe button followed by choosing all notifications. And if you're looking at purchasing or considering purchasing any of the cameras in the top 10, please use my links down below to bnh or amazon.com as I get a small commission back and that goes to supporting this channel, purchasing new gear like Manfrotto 504X, a new Canon EOS R5 Mark II, the Canon EOS R1. And those two cameras are on my roadmap for 2023, depending on which ones come out first or maybe even into 2024. So I'm looking forward to picking up those cameras. And I wanna thank you uh, for everybody who's been watching this channel for the last three years now. Uh, it's been quite a journey. I really do appreciate you watching, subscribing, liking, commenting, engaging with me as I think we've built up a pretty good community and supporting the channel where you can. I really very much do appreciate it. And I want to wish you a very happy and Merry Christmas. It is Christmas Eve here in Canada. I'm not sure when this video is going to come out. I'm probably going to try and release it today, depending on how well I feel after this. It's, uh, it's been tough trying to do this video. I've had a few coughing spells. I've had to stop recording, go upstairs and, you know, do stuff. Mm, even now hold it together, hold it together. I just want to say um, a big thanks for supporting this channel. I'm on the verge of 35,000 subscribers, which to me is a really big deal. You don't get this far unless, of course, you're delivering something that viewers want and that you're still watching uh, means an awful lot to me. So thank you so much for watching me. Have yourself a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and um, may you stay well and healthy and um, have a very prosperous New Year. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Merry Christmas.